With Axie, we're looking to be a relatable, fun, nostalgic entry point into the world of crypto, right? Nostalgia is the most powerful of human emotions. We have gamers, right? Our generation, we grew up playing games like uh, RuneScape, Diablo, World of Warcraft, Stardew Valley. These uh, experiences evoke really powerful emotions. And when you can basically evoke that emotion and then attach crypto to it, right? You have a way to get people down the rabbit hole and I think a much uh, I don't know, in, in, in a way that makes a lot more sense to you know, billions of gamers worldwide. Just got done filming with Jiho, the chief growth officer and one of the co-founders of Axie Infinity. Blew my mind, crazy stuff. Yeah, Axie is one of the largest play to earn games and he shares a glimpse of the future that kind of blows my mind. Yeah, we talked all about play to earn, understanding it, how it's the natural progression of a lot of the gaming industry and what the world might look like in the next 10 years. Super excited for you guys to check this one out. You're gonna love it. Enjoy it. What is up you guys? Today, I am so excited to share with you one of my favorite companies, ButcherBox, my go-to resource for all my meat needs. If you've been following me by now, you know that I love meat. Steak and beef are my favorite food in the world and I really can't get enough of them. Well, ButcherBox has me covered. They've got the 100% grass-fed beef that I love, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood for my wife, and a little bit of everything in between. There's great flexibility. You can mix and match boxes, choose when it comes to you, so there's really something for the whole family. And it all comes at an unbeatable value, generally less than $6 per meal. I've loved ButcherBox, and I know that you will too. Today, we're so excited to be sharing with you a special offer, free ground beef for life as long as you keep a subscription going with ButcherBox. You can find that offer special for our listeners at butcherbox.com room. Again, that's free ground beef for life by going to butcherbox.com room. You're gonna love it. Today's episode is brought to you by Marketer Hire. With Marketer Hire, you can get expert marketers on demand. It's easy and fast. What's Marketer Hire? Simply put, Marketer Hire is a marketplace for marketing talent. They built a network of expert marketing professionals pre-vetted by top marketers from well-known and high-growth brands. And then they use their proprietary marketer match technology to match clients with the best marketer for every single project. And they match them fast, typically within 48 hours or less. There's zero risk. You don't sign or pay anything unless you choose to work with someone. Many of my startups in the portfolio are using Marketer Hire and absolutely love it. If you're a growing business, you will too. Check them out today at marketerhire.com. Again, that's marketerhire.com. And tell them Sahil sent you. Video games is uh, the topic of the day. We've got, uh, I guess, the like natural future of where people are saying video games are going. It's like the Web3 future. So you're going to guide me on this journey down and play to earn land. Because I grew up, I was like a Pokemon guy. I loved Pokemon, uh, World of Warcraft, Matt, like all this stuff I played. I love video games. I haven't been as close to it recently, invested in the space a little bit. I think it's awesome, but stoked to talk about video games today with, with Jiho. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never told you this, but I actually played professional Counter-Strike no way. When I was like 16. Really? Something. Yeah. Well, how did that come about? Did you practice and you uh, were like sick at Counter-Strike? Yeah, pretty much. Dude, <laughs> Yeah. this reminds me so much of, you, you know Josh, um, but Josh has three, so Josh Fabian, founder of Medify, has three kids, I think three, four, and two of his sons are like top 50 in the world Pokemon players and they're little dudes and they go up against adults in this like strategy game and they're just complete savages like destroy them and so I'm imagining you as a 16 year old kid or 15 year old kid like little baby Greg totally. rolling around destroying people in Counter-Strike totally yeah we uh <laughs> me and my my clan actually competed in the qualifier for the world cyber games in maybe 2004 no um, way which was a long time ago um, I love that. So yeah, I need pictures. We're gonna need to check receipts on this. There's one picture of me, which is insane. Which maybe I can dig up. Um, we're gonna dig it yeah. up. We're gonna throw it into the Discord <laughs> after we yeah. get done with this because we're gonna need to see this picture. I need to see 15 year old Greg. I'm gonna get memed. <laughs> yeah, I've got like I the hope so. longest cyber. Yeah. Anyways, I can't um, wait. Yeah. So what are we gonna dig into today? I mean, we've got a lot to cover with Jiho. Have you? 
Well, I've been just I've been thinking about play to earn a bunch and also learn to earn. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen Rabbit Hole GG? What is learn to earn? So play play to earn. We're going to dive into it. Geo, like. We'll talk about all the definitions and get into it. Learn to earn, I've never heard of. So what is that? Learn to earn, well, I'll explain it by the example, like rabbit hole. So the way rabbit hole works is you earn tokens uh, from decentralized applications by learning about them. So for example, Uniswap is one of the biggest protocols that exists um, in decentralized finance. And they'll basically give, let's say, you know, 10 uni tokens if you go on a rabbit hole quest. And the rabbit hole quest is all about learning about how Uniswap works and how to actually, you know, use some of their protocol. Um, So Uniswap is happy because they've just acquired this new customer uh, who is vetted, right? They've actually learned how to use the protocol and they've actually they've got, you know, quote unquote, on chain reputation. So meaning you've learned uh, how to use Uniswap and it's almost minted to the blockchain. So it's like this, you know, Greg Eisenberg learned this. Um, and that's that's really the concept of learn to earn. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, it's a, it's a natural sort of play adjacency to play to earn. It's really interesting to think about like normal world non-web three applications of that exact thing like how companies might be able to integrate learn to earn because if you think about like a bank a credit card company new financial services infrastructure they benefit so much from people understanding what they're building in the product suite and so i wonder whether there are ways to like leverage that idea by just like teaching people more and now suddenly you've acquired a customer effectively. And it's more interesting in the Web3 context because now you have like people that could be developers. Like they should do a developer camp where they teach you how to code on Solana or they teach you how to code on top of Ethereum. And then you get one ETH for doing the course. Like they pay you to take the course because now they have new developers that are building on top of it and creating this whole ecosystem effect. Yeah, I think I, I think that that's where it's all going. Yeah. Where I actually did a thread on this where I believe that in the future, um, you'll have your resume on chain mm. and you'll be able to apply at a job and then within 60 seconds get that job because you know those people know that you are great at Uniswap or you understand how to code in Rust or Solidity or whatever and you have these these badges to prove it. Um, I think that's the future. I got like a ton of backlash from that thread, like thousands of people being like, you're completely wrong. Like, So is the idea, sorry, I want to go deeper on that just for one second before you extend. So the idea of it being on chain would mean that you would have your resume. It would also have like credibility scores on chain associated with every skill set and experience you say you have. So people could have, in a trustless way, you would know when you went to it that that person had been stamped of approval and had executed a number of things really high quality with whatever that skill set is. What's stopping me? Yes, okay. that's exactly how okay. it works. What's stopping me from going on LinkedIn and being like, I'm the head of magic at McDonald's. Oh, totally. N- nothing. Yeah. So what I do like about applying blockchain to this is it's vetted. You know, there's you, you, I went through rabbit hole and I've learned this skill and therefore I, I've, I've proven. Yeah, that really is interesting. It's interesting to think about derivative businesses you could build off of it too, of like, how do I... Um, like, it would be very cool to say, I'm going to, like, you did crypto college. You're teaching a bunch of people how to build in, in Web3. Um, if I'm an enterprising person, I might actually go buy a bunch of those NFTs, stake them, stake a bunch of people with scholarship and say, I want 10% of your first company. Like, use it as my venture investment in them and say, if you're going to go build in this space, I'll buy you your ticket into this thing. But... I'm the guy, now you have to give me a 10% stake. Or when you raise your first round, I have to have priority access at a 20% discount to whatever you raise at in order to invest. And it's sort of like, I mean, it's what these incubators are doing in a lot of sense, but it's for a Web3 world. So you actually are paying, I mean, like you're you're giving them their ticket to the learning experience. And even cooler when you think about the actual protocols doing it. So like Solana paying to have students go into a Solana boot camp because they know that it's going to create and foster a broader ecosystem. Kind of a cool idea to like think about what the businesses are that could be built around that. Yeah, I think uh, 
I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, so with Crypto College, like we were a course teaching about NFTs, DAOs, and social tokens, and we had 150 people who are builders, right? They're building, they've now like, they're vetted, they've learned how to do this, and a lot of them are building successful projects. Mm-hmm. It makes sense that either us as, as Crypto College or, or some external group um, comes and basically, yeah, stakes or lends out uh, these, these uh, admission tickets. And then you would imagine that it, there's a smart contract that's baked into it that basically says, yeah, I get X percent of your revenue or I get Y. Y. And that's the beauty about Web3 and, and, and crypto is that you can just bake that into the code of the smart contract. Yeah. yeah. So this learn to earn thing is really interesting. Um, I want to... I want to talk more about it with you because I think there are a bunch of cool. I feel we could do a whole episode on Learn to Earn. Yeah. I think there's like a bunch of really cool applications of it too to like dive in more, understand some of the business opportunities that come off this. And also, like, can you create kind of Learn to Earn services that then, um, you know, you could plug into older world companies and figure out ways to foster new kind of uh, ecosystems around your existing like old world Web2 company and product? So I, I really do think that's interesting. I do want to bring in Jiho and dive in on play to earn because the video game aspect and what they're building is super, super interesting. And I think we need to go deep on it. And he's, he's the guy to bring in. He's the guy. So the let's, guy. let's do let's it. Bring him in. We'll jam on it. Hey, this is Jiho. I'm uh, the co-founder of Axie Infinity. Coming at you live. Yeah. We are live. Yeah. <laughs> in Miami Jiho. for yeah. NFT. <laughs> Uh, Basel, I guess. NFT model. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's YouTube, podcast, Spotify, yep. um, and then a community. So we built a whole thing around Discord alongside it. It's oh, gonna, nice. Yeah. I should join your Discord. Yeah, it's going to be cool. We'll go in there. Like, after the episode drops, we'll <laughs> Discord you, changed we'll my it. life. Like, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, how so? Uh, <clears throat> that's, how I, that's how, you know, like, I, I saw the Wired article that a crypto kitty <laughs> sold for $150,000. I was like, what the fuck is a crypto kitty? <laughs> Uh, but this seems right, like kind of interesting. This seems accessible. As I was always a gamer. I was always a collector. I wasn't. I wasn't into crypto when it was about trading. I already knew how to trade options. So if I wanted extreme volatility, I already knew where to get that. Uh, yeah. So then, so then I, I found. I saw that a what crypto kitty had 2017, like December 1st or something like that. So basically <laughs> four years ago to the day. Uh, right. Yeah. Crazy. Exactly. Four, four years year ago. Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Discover crypto kitties, and I was like. It was an interesting community, right? Like people were doing interesting stuff around it. I built, I worked on a project called Kitty Hats that was building accessories uh, on top of on top of it, right? So, uh, was were you to, at Yale at the time? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I had graduated. I was a quant recruiter for a couple of years. Uh, no way. Yeah. Some, oh, so and some like, like the smartest people that I were, was talking to, that I'd been talking to, all super interested in Ethereum uh, and, and smart contracts. Uh, so, that's cool. uh, so it was on my radar, right? And then I saw Crypto Kitties, uh, but then right, it kind of it was just a proof of concept, right? It was like it's like let's not try to turn this into something that it's not destined to be. Uh, but we knew that okay, like right, there was problems with the economy, right? So we need we needed to figure out like how can we get people to actually just right like want to hold <laughs> these pets rather than just like breeding and selling, right? Uh, yeah. We need we needed there to be more verbs, <laughs> more yeah. utility, right? Uh, I think of ver- utility in terms of verbs, right? Like, okay, you could breed, you can collect. What else, right? Okay, battle, right? Um, That's a cool way of thinking like, about it. I've never thought of yeah. that utility in terms of verbs. It makes a ton of sense, though. Battle, Super logical. Yeah, battle, collect, yeah. build, yeah, harvest, yeah. Right? These are all uh, verbs that we're trying to bring to Axie. So. That's so cool. Uh, okay, so yeah. you, so Discord, you ended up like. You got into Discord channels because you saw that things were going on with it and stuff was happening. You would talk to a bunch of smart people that were getting into it. And clearly, then you started paying attention to it. And so, like, what actually brought you from there then to the Axie story? Yeah, so I joined Axie as a community member, right? So I I'd hopped in. I think there were 10 people, uh, <laughs> like, that were regularly chatting in the Discord at that time. So, it was, uh, and yeah, I met the founders, uh, Trung, Masamune, they were talking about their vision in the Discord at the time. It was like, uh, and I said, hey, like, this is something that could work. It's right. It has that uh, collectability aspect and the scarcity, but there's also, right, this plan for long term fun and uh, utility. And I was like, I, th- I saw that as the perfect formula for building an amazing community. Um, or, uh, so, so did the game exist at that point or was it just a vision? It was so, yeah, so I arrived on the day I think that the Axie 
were unveiled. So there was a month where people were buying tokens, NFTs that you couldn't see. Actually, this this is not like a common. Yeah, the this mystery, is not a common strategy, right? NFT. But at the time, it was people were like, this "Adam is, bomb yeah. story." <laughs> people were like, "Are these? Is this a scam? Is are is this art ever going to be revealed?" And then as soon as the art was revealed, I think people felt safe to to kind of tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, so then I, I I arrived. You could see the axes, right? Uh, I bought three, and I was like, "Okay, like, what do we do next, right? Like, we need we need to." Uh, we need to we need to start building. What did they cost um, when you first bought them? I think Do you remember the, the axes that I got were like 0.15 ETH each or okay. something. Like these are origin axes, right? Yeah. So I think you know there was a chance that you could get a when you were buying these original axes, right? There's only 4,088 of them hard cap uh, origin axes, and around like basically each time up one of their body parts or a gene was rolled, there was a chance that it was a mystic part. Mm -hmm. right? So they're uh, six body parts. Um, so it's like around like a 30% chance that it would have a mystic part. Mystics are like limited, collectible, yeah. uh, or kind of like the holy grail with an oxy. Right? So I think like mystics are, I think four, around 30 ETH right now each, something like that. It's so cool because um like now we're all familiar with these terms. Like you spend time in the NFT world, you like understand rarity, you understand all the different properties. But in 2017, or what, what, it was 2017, it was like, this is weird, I don't <laughs> understand it. It's like the Chris Dixon thing of like, if it looks like a toy, you know, mm. it might be the thing of the future. Yeah, people were saying that like in the early days of NFTs, right? They were just, they were, uh, pre and I, I, I'd seen that, I think Andreessen invested in Crypto Kitties, it obviously became Dapper Labs later. So I was like, okay, this is a space. This is going to be an entire market. Uh, so I was, I was kind of looking for an opportunity to get involved as a builder in a project, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I found Axie as a community member and just started trying to help out. So I That's was helping with the community, doing some writing, <laughs> just keeping the Discord chat liquidity high. You guys are kindred spirits. So, so you're the C, <laughs> you're the CEO of Axie Infinity, right? No, no, no. No, I'm a co-founder, growth lead, I guess, growth. CGO, yeah. I guess. Yeah. In terms CGO. Of, uh, yeah. So yeah. you can go from a community member yeah. to a C-level executive by just literally partaking in the community and contributing. Like, you know, when you started, I would imagine, joining that community, your first, you know, you, you never thought that you'd be, or, or correct me if I'm wrong, did you think that you were going to be the chief growth officer of this, of this big thing? <clears throat> I don't know. I was taking it day by day. Like I was just also having fun, right? Yeah. Like I was just hanging out, was meeting like new people. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of the web three. I always think about Greg's going to make fun of me for this. Probably I, like I am a, uh, I'm still a ludite, and I still am like developing my understanding of all these things and embracing it. And I think of all of these things in like prior to web three analogs. And I think of this as like a story of. It's like the person that starts as like. The you know stockroom floor and now is the CEO like Walmart actually I think the CEO of Walmart currently is a guy that like started as a store man like he started as a store clerk. I mean right Walmart. before this Crazy. we had Cat Cole who yeah. wasn't she a Hooters? she was a Hooters waitress and, and then became the head the head you know yeah, and oh, I think wow. yeah. I think the you know the 2021-2022 equivalent of that is you start in the Discord mm. we're hiring and. Inc like incredible talent from the discord right now from the community right? so cool um, that's so cool so i want to get into um i want to get into the axie story for sure because i think it's amazing i've done a bunch of research and reading on you and um and the story but maybe we start like let's set the stage for people that are listening people like me that probably don't understand it quite as much with just like a little bit of kind of definitions around it so mm -hmm. Can you guys talk, you guys know this much better than me, can you talk about like free to play and then how does that transition and what does play to play to earn mean? Yeah, sure. So in the, in the, right, in the, in traditional gaming, right, like the developers, the app stores, the publishers, they're all, right, they're all working uh and they're, they're they're working together they're selling a product right they're still either selling skins or game copies um selling loot boxes right they're, traditionally they're taking close to 100 percent of the revenue generated by the game right there are some like black and gray markets but it's it's not uh yeah they're they're kind of <laughs> difficult uh to 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 uh access and and use so our, our model is a lot different, right? We're very focused on 
the community, the player-owned economy. Uh, so it, we see it as we've kind of lowered taxes from close to 100% to around 4.25%, right? Which is the uh, fee on the Axie marketplace, right? So rather than selling Axies directly, we uh, monetize by just taking a percent or a cut of all peer-to-peer, player-to-player uh, transactions on our marketplace. So the original, I just want to read it back to you guys and make mm-hmm. sure I'm understanding it correctly. So like earlier, think like Fortnite, everyone knows Fortnite. They, you know, Epic Games like has this massive ecosystem that they've built. The game is free to play and you go buy skins or you buy different attributes or whatever within the game. All of that money, it sounds like, is going to Epic. Like they are the 100%. That's the rent. Yeah. The way you put it, I thought was great. The rent, they're taking it. The players get to play. The utility the players get is that they have fun. There's no like, you're not earning anything. And the difference here when you start thinking about play to earn is rather than that company taking 100%, that whole pool now is basically for the players and for the ecosystem and the world in a, in a way that you're creating. And the actual company actually yeah. takes a clip, like it's a tiny percentage that gets taken, yeah. I don't know, 5% or something. Yeah. It's also like an important thing to recognize too, right? Is people are also spending within Axie for reasons that they spend on right, traditional digital items, right? Like they're spending for fun, they're spending for status, right? Like Axie is an incredibly fun game and it's an amazing community. This is actually what backs the economy. That's also why it's so hard to replicate, right? If it was just about mechanisms, then everyone would just copy the mechanism and then there, there would be all these thriving uh, NFT planner and games right now. But, but there aren't. There's only one, actually. Uh, you- because I think it has to do with that uh, idea of the social capital backing the economy. Could you talk more about that? So what makes a great play to earn game? What are, what are the ingredients? I think there, 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 there is a lot. I mean, you need, I think, an amazing community. Something where, the, the way that I think about crypto in general is like, what are the, are there products where the community is doing a majority of the work already, uh, where a middleman is extracting the value uh, away from that community, and can we cut out the middleman and basically reward the community for the work that they're already doing? So I think that pro- any product that has the community, like user-generated content, right? Like That's brilliant. The, the, anything that has a high amount of work being done by users with, lar- with large existing middlemen is ripe for disruption. So that's how, that's how I, I, I look at it. So yeah, I think like the Roblox model would work better, right, if they opened up the economy even more. You know that like Roblox actually uh, was very irrelevant for a long time until they allowed people to actually cash out their ro- Robux. Um, so it's a more open model. That's why it's like that's why it's uh, actually catapulted. But we just we're, we're taking it to the natural conclusion, which is like you know giving giving as much as possible uh, to the community. So we need to go deeper on this because that was brilliant. So just as a framework, find a business or an industry where the community is creating the vast majority of the value. And if there is a rent collector sitting there that's somehow harvesting most of the value from that, it needs to be disrupted. And it likely will be disrupted by something that looks more like Web3 and that is more decentralized and community oriented. I think it's so interesting to think about the incentives that you're relying on to advance these spaces too, where like with the prior versions, you are relying on the fact that like Epic or whatever the developer is will continue to reinvest those profits to enhance and make the ecosystem better and continue to make the game better and make it more engaging and fun over time. With this, you're actually not relying on anybody because it is in every player's best interest to make the ecosystem better so that they can earn more money in it. And each, so they all yeah. have that. They want to reinvest. Many of the players, right, you, you can see each each of them as a digital pet store owner, right? Uh, and I, I, actually, Magic is actually a more of a decentralized model too, right? Where right, there's a secondary market, there's kind of like this economy. Uh, each store owner, right, is kind of incentivized to host Magic uh, nights, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they have like Magic Friday, I think, like I where they have tournaments, right? So it's more of a decentralized model, right? So, but uh, I think like, w- yeah, one of the things that NFTs do, in my opinion, is they give the characteristics of physical collectibles, like tr- trading cards, to digital assets. Can we right? talk so. more about that? So Magic, I've always wondered, like, 
who was th- wh- like why they were throwing these magic tournaments like yeah. can you talk more about the mo- first of all i didn't know that you were like a magic nerd i, I wouldn't say <laughs> i was a magic nerd but i loved magic cards pokemon yeah. i was a warcraft people were guy. into that kind of stuff like magic like guy. these are a lot of them like were super early to act yeah. totally, no, they I, see them they see the model as just like taking that physical world model yeah. and applying it to a borderless future yeah. i just I, when i look at him i see like stanford baseball <laughs> pitcher Fun fact, the Stanford baseball team, my freshman year, the entire team on all of our road trips would be sitting on our computers playing World of Warcraft together on the way to games. Oh, nice. Hilarious. Narrative violation. Yeah, narrative violation. It. But yeah, going back to Magic, like, do you, do you know about their model? Because I'm, I'm, I've recently been obsessed around taking sort of like older community models and bringing it online. So I'm just curious if you... Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm like I studied it a little bit in the early days of Axie, uh, and I saw that basically physical events were really important to their propagation, um, the proliferation of magic, right? Where, uh, yeah, store owner, the store owners, and right, like they, they basically will the uh, Wizards of the Coast, they'll send merch basically, and I guess appoint people, um, just kind of like this bureaucracy or whatever, and and they have this whole framework for basically. Uh, yeah, hosting events, and I think there are like thousands of them, right, every Friday, all across uh, the country. It's funny because um, so. we we talk about the metaverse, right? We talk about this digital place, but so many of us forget that physical is where community is. So actually- community, right? So for for something like Magic, where there's a huge secondary market, right? Just like Axie, the community is really important because people need to be spending, right, for that flex. Right. So in magic, right, why do people buy a, why would anyone buy a black lotus? Right. They might see it as a store of value, but it's also right. It's like you get to tell the other people in the magic community that you have a fucking black lotus. Right. So similar, right. Similar, similar dynamic in the Axie community, right. With all yeah. the, the collectability. Um, and that it's that, right. Like, uh, status that, right, drives a lot of the economic activity as well. Yeah. And it creates a, it creates a world as you continue to scale it, both physical and digital. But you're sort of just what you're creating is not a game anymore. It's like an entire ecosystem, really a nation um, of Axie players that's borderless. And so it doesn't matter if you know, all the articles about the people in the Philippines that are earning a living wage playing Axie. It's amazing. It's like you watch these videos and it's very inspiring that there are people that are doing this. And then there's someone in America and like you go and host an event at Art Basel and people that have never met, never connected in person in any form or function are now all of a sudden connected in this cool, very real way. It doesn't matter the color of their skin. It's like very global. It's really, really cool. Um, that's one of the things that I love, just like the promise of it that I love so much is that borderless aspect to it. Mm. One of the things I want to also ask about is like, what are the challenges of the unique I don't know, drawbacks or challenges of this play to earn model. Like with Axie, you had this massive hype cycle, um, you know, like Packy had his piece on it and there was all this press and everything. And, you know, the prices of everything spiked. It's, it's obviously like with every hype cycle, it pulls back pricing. So like, h- how do you think about that aspect of the play to earn model where you're going to have natural, like any market fluctuations mm-hmm. in the prices and how it impacts players and gaming. Sure. I mean, this has happened too, right? Like where we, we built all tw- through throughout 2018, 2019, right? Axie prices went from right. Right, the cheapest, you know, kind of run of the mill axes went from, I think $5 to 20 cents or something. But that was really important for the community. That was char- character building. That volatility actually, uh, creates fermentation, a fermentation process. So it's actually needed, right? Like every crypto, strong crypto community needs to go through a bear market to, uh, together. Unfortunately, maybe for better or for worse, I think that that's how it works. I think that's also one of the hard parts of starting a project now. And a lot of projects come to me for advice on like, how do you build a community? Uh, it's like, but they're, they're operating in a totally different market, right? Like the same things that we did back then are not gonna work now. Um, it's like the Lindy effect. Have you read uh, any yeah, Taleb? Yeah. I know, like he's like somewhat hated in the Bitcoin community for like being anti Bitcoin, but mm-hmm. hit the Lindy effect of the whole idea of like the longer you've survived, the longer you're likely to survive. And so being hardened by those periods of mm-hmm. pain actually leads to more survivability of it. I think it's a great, it's a great way of putting it. Actually, like you need those yeah. moments. I also say there one of the drawbacks of like this whole narrative around play play to earn. I prefer we we prefer to call it play and earn, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the drawbacks of the narrative is that, right, the community aspect, the, you know, the, uh, the fun of the entire ecosystem, it kind of takes like a backseat to, you know, 
this thing that's a kind of a new innovation, right? It's, there, are, there are so many fun games out there. There are a lot of amazing communities out there, right? This is kind of a fundamental new innovation, but sometimes uh, it takes a little bit of the spotlight off of right, the, the rest of the ecosystem and, and, and also the stuff that basically allows the play to earn model to work, right? And then people start saying, oh, like play to earn, like how, does this, how is this sustainable? Because they don't understand how fun the game is, how awesome the community is, right? Fast forward 10 years from now, what percentage of the game gaming market is play and earn versus traditional as you define it? You- well, I, I think that these digital economies are become right, some of the largest economies of all time, right? So I, like, it's more like how many games will there be that are larger than large countries or something, right? Uh, with economies that are larger than large countries. Um, I think that there will be. I think that there will be hundreds of millions, if not billions, of uh, players playing. You know, participating in these, uh, yeah, digital worlds. Right. We're already seeing that. Right. Our digital lives, our digital identities, are becoming increasingly more important. Uh, the pandemic, right, kind of expedited that. Uh, but now it's like, okay, we're using the digital world as kind of a a way to funnel or to sift through who we actually want to spend time with in, in the physical world as well, right? So I think that's also that unity, that fusion uh, is, is super bullish for uh, everything that we're building. And, yeah. and is the vision, can you walk us through a little bit of the vision of Axie in the sense of like, um, could you see a world where people not only come to Axie to just play, but they go, maybe there's quests that have real world implications mm. or like, do you see it more as like um, a potential like virtual world where it could be serious and fun or do you see it just fun? Like, the you know, hey, we're just trying to build like the most fun experience and there's some on-chain revenue, sure. et cetera. Yeah, actually, like, so uh, we, we just had an internal discussion about this, right? It's like the world, they want to see it like, oh, this is a fun game, right? But w- w- <laughs> as uh, right stewards of the ecosystem, we think a little bit more in terms of like, what are the archetypes of players in this ecosystem, right? We so right now we have like uh, battler, competitive battlers, right? We have scholarship managers, people that are renting out their axes. We have scholars, right? They're kind of just farming tokens uh, to survive. Uh, then we have the collectors, right? They're really into the aesthetics and the scarcity aspect of it. Um, and then we have people who just they hold access and they stake it, and they, they're also contributing to the ecosystem. There are people who, right, they trade the SLP token, and this provides liquidity for it. Why? Because it has interesting like uh, correlations to the rest of, to the, all other basically asset classes. Because it's kind of like a, it's a it's a uncapped uh, coin that's kind of tied to the value of human effort within our ecosystem. So it's kind of like a weird correlation thing. So basically there are all these different archetypes, right? And we need to also think about when we think about the future, what are the future archetypes of people that we want to have in our ecosystem? So it's a little bit, I think a more precise way (laughs) of thinking about it because right. Fun is very, uh, subjective and some people believe that they're the arbiters of fun. Uh, but it's, to me, it's like, yeah, it's not specific enough. Um, it's not something that you can build, uh, scientifically with. So you hit on something there that I think is like one of the most mind blown, like for it fucked me up the first time I was reading about it, to be totally honest, which was like this whole idea of the physical world, real world economies that are being built outside and alongside adjacent to Mm. Axie. And like the scholar thing is a perfect example of this. Like I've seen it with, I think, it was, what is it? YGG, like yeah. the Yield Guild Games. Is That's that what right. it stands yeah. for? Um, and a few others that have kind of popped up that are basically have, they've built real world physical businesses adjacent to Axie to kind of support the ecosystem mm. that's being built, not supported by Axie. It's just companies that have like enterprising entrepreneurs that have gone and realized they could stake people to go and play in the game. The same way, honestly, as like, what we've done with athletes in the past, like Russian tennis players have been backed by these like oligarchs to go Mm. and build a career. And then they take a percentage of their earnings. That to me is like this seminal moment of what you're doing that all of a sudden there are economies being built outside of you where you're like, Oh, this looks like a country where you have all these random economy points. Did you guys, was that like a vision that you had or did you start seeing it and say, Holy shit, there's really something to this. It, it was, it's it's something right like I don't know like you if there's fog of war right like so you just go and you try to get pr- to product market fit yeah. in the early days we saw that right Axie was more w- more than a game because people were spending so much time on the Discord right like that was kind of like their home 
so we saw Axie in the early days as maybe a social network, but we couldn't pitch it as a social network when we hold, had only 200 people <laughs> in the community. Uh, but early on, we saw that there was something very special happening with the community. Uh, you know, we've, we all had you know, a thesis that right, these digital economies would, would start to rise. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, it was definitely right, like to see, yeah, to see people start building on top of it, right? To see uh, phys- even uh, physical, uh, physical businesses are starting to accept Axis and SLP yeah. as payment uh, to lure right more foot traffic, right? Like if you if you know that there are a lot of like Axie players in your town, you can get them to come check out your business by accepting our in-game currencies, right? So this is a marketing yeah. strategy, it's a user acquisition strategy for uh, businesses in the traditional world. So yeah, I think like right, what are, what is a nation? Like how do we define a nation, right? Do nations typically have like right like a kind of an economy, maybe culture national pastimes sometimes languages um i think it's 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 we're starting to see all of that uh develop within axie uh physical borders are maybe like you know the last uh component of it i think that we have a chance you know over the next 15 years to you know potentially acquire some distressed real estate from a sovereign nation uh and maybe set up a special economic zone or something that could be recognized by the un um, so yeah, I, we, 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 we've already <laughs> had to st- we start issuing statements to the gov- to the legacy governments of the world, right? Cause they're like, oh, like we, we heard that the central bank of the Philippines was interested in an Axie and asking questions about it. Uh, and so we didn't know how to get into contact with them. So we put out like a, an announcement saying that, you know, we encourage our players to pay taxes if they have to, <laughs> or if, if they're, if they're, you know, local, I guess, uh, governments are requiring them to. Yeah, I think, I mean, on one hand, I hear you, Sahil, like you're not even saying anything, but I hear you in terms of like, it's wild that you can start a game, bring people together that eventually leads to like a country. Um, On the other hand, it kind of makes sense, right? Like you've built an economy, you've built like-minded individuals, you've built culture, you've built community. Um, We just had a conversation with Meltem and Melt- well, you know, what Meltem was saying is, you know, the future, basically that there's going to be these like new churches and new yeah. cathedrals. Um, and She's actually trying to build, I mean, like the church of Bitcoin. I don't know if it's Bitcoin, but basically like an actual, you know, treated as a religion for tax purposes. Mm. And you can put your gains into this so that it's allocating on a tax efficient basis to go do it. It's kind of, it's a crazy concept, but not that crazy when you break it down to the atomic unit of it actually um i mean it's not like my fraternity right like was like some uh i think it was like a non-profit organization or yeah something, right so, right yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah yeah exactly and it's you know how many people play axie approximately like uh yeah, we have 2.8 million daily active users so right now. Yeah. millions of people right like yeah. iceland is 400,000 people mm-hmm. if you think about it yeah we have, um, I think, two players in Iceland. It was a long <laughs> time where I was like, fuck, I can't, like, yeah, Iceland, Green, yeah, I think Iceland, like, yeah. we just didn't have any anyone there. I was like, who wants to be the first? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and I think, like, so, I mean, you're bigger than Iceland. Yeah. You know, you're, 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 you're five to six times bigger than Iceland. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense that like, yeah, like you might want to acquire, you know, some people might want to move to this place. Makes It makes a lot of sense. I'm starting to see people describe the scale of the Axie economy as in terms of GDP. Right. right? Um, so, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I mean, well, that's like the tipping point, right? When people start saying it that yeah. way. Well, old is, you know, gross domestic product. New is game domestic product. <laughs> yeah. I, the... Um, nice. I, the first time I ever thought about this question, like you asked, like, what is a country? Um, Yuval Noah Harari has that book, Sapiens, which everyone should read if they haven't. And he goes into that, like, what is an organization? What is a company? What is a country? It's just shared belief mm. at the end of the day. And it's just like you have a shared belief in something and there's community, like all of what we're talking about here. It's community. It's bringing it together. Like money. What is money? It's just trust. Like you have c- What is belief. money? That was actually the opening yeah. line to my thesis. Seriously. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's crazy when you break these things down to the, like boil them down to the root. Um, I just, that like, I just think it's fast. I also think it's fascinating if you're a builder and you're looking for a new startup idea, what well, you have an Axie. Um, and probably there are a couple other things out there that have a similar fervor around them right now, but not many is a group of 2.8 million people worldwide that are 
highly, highly engaged with something um, that have a ton of needs that like you can go and create something for exactly those needs. The people that were doing these scholar programs staking are doing that. But like there are going to be unique banking and financial services needs that come off of um, people that are playing Mm. on a regular basis. What can you go build that like services those people really, really well? So we just we just actually just launched a a DEX, a decentralized exchange. It's called Katana. Uh, I believe it's the second large. There's a one point four billion dollars locked in it. We (laughs) only have two pairs, Axis ETH and SLP ETH. Uh, We also have USDC ETH as well. Um, So we're getting stable coin access to people in the emerging markets as well. Where did it Uh, previously happen? Was it like FTX or something where they previously uh, did people it? People were using like Binance a lot, okay. like DEXs on Ethereum and stuff. There was a lot of like friction around, right? Like basically you claim the token within your eco- our ecosystem for playing the game. And then you have to like transfer it out of the ecosystem to right to, to sell it. Right. Um, so yeah, like it, it's, it's, I think it was a huge catalyst for us. Uh, yeah, I think they're... A huge thing for you guys, this is just a random mm. idea that I'm having right now, but like in terms of creating stability within the ecosystem mm. as well, and I've talked about it with several people, like rich people don't sell the assets they have. They take loans out against it, never have to sell it. They live off of the loans against it. That will eventually happen in the Axie community. And then you won't have these massive price swings and volatility within mm. the market because people will be leaving their SLP within the ecosystem. Sure, so sure. If you can like have financial services infrastructure that gets built outside it, that allows people to actually take a living wage yeah. as a claim against their... What yeah, is I think it, the Axis next the their, next thing yeah. maybe maybe uh, maybe you agree like I think maybe the, one of the next things that we should build on Ronin is something like right something like Ave or a Compound mm-hmm. right? a money market basically um, and that uh, this will basically allow right like people to get liquidity right from their Axis holdings yeah. uh, without having to suffer yeah. a taxable event. Could yeah. you could you explain what Ave or Compound is to to right in you know. Regular normies. Yeah, uh, yeah like yeah. so Aave and Compound are crypto money markets where you can uh, basically deposit tokens and uh, receive a stablecoin loan um, based on the value of those assets, right? So, uh, yeah, you might be able to, right, let's say you deposit $100 of a, t- of, uh, of a token of, let's say, ETH, you can then draw maybe $20 of stablecoin, right? And this basically allows you to get liquidity uh, from your crypto without having to sell it. And yeah, you can also, right, like on the other side, you can also borrow uh, from these money markets if maybe you want leverage mm-hmm. or you have some need for ETH. And the reason this is hugely crypto. valuable, I mean, in a normal, in a non axi context is like if I have a ton of Bitcoin, but I bought it at $100 and now it's worth 60000 and I want to go buy a house. I can't do that if I like I sell my Bitcoin, pay a huge tax on that gain and then go buy a house with the cash. This allows you to leave your Bitcoin. You never have to pay the tax and you can draw money against it and then go and buy it. And so in the Axie Infinity case, why it's interesting is people wouldn't have to sell and convert to fiat in order to pay for their food in the grocery store um, down the street. They could leave it in the game, which, by the way, has the nice benefit of creating price stability in the game, which drives more people in and continues to drive appreciation and growth of the ecosystem, but they can still draw against it to go buy their food and live <laughs> live yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah, so that's I like think it's a potentially impactful. potentially important project uh, product. You know, we have to do a lot of education, right? Like, so we see Axie as an accessible, cute, nostalgic, um, community driven ra- uh, kind of rabbit hole into the rest of the crypto as well, right? So you, you start with the game and the community, but then right, you start to learn okay how to stake, right? How to uh, pull liquidity. Um, you start to all these other verbs, right? Get unlocked, right? Stake, farm, deposit, borrow, uh, and f- uh, yeah, fifty percent of our users have never used crypto before. Yeah, that's amazing. Twenty five percent of them don't even have a bank account, so we have to do a lot of basic financial and crypto education. Um, so people are learning incredible amounts. I see Axie as also like an education platform in some ways. Um, there are a lot of ed- educational like content companies coming yeah. to us, you know, saying, hey, they would want to have us reskin their course with Axie so that it, right, like, it's people actually use it. Yeah, I mean, this is like, you're creating so much value for the Web3 and crypto ecosystem by educating people in this way. It's also what you're saying is the reason why I haven't invested in any financial literacy like platforms or businesses is because I fundamentally believe that financial literacy happens through actual like 
action Very and putting skin mm, in the game. And, and no, seriously. And like, it's exactly. not me taking a course on like how to invest. It's by actually having skin in the game and f- learning it by feeling it out and like fucking up, feeling yeah. the pain of something and re- getting rug pulled, whatever like ends up happening. Um, but that, like that, the amount of value that's being created by taking something that looks like a toy, people get on ramped into crypto and now they're red pilled to some extent, starting to see what the future looks like, all of these different things happening. And suddenly we have, you know, it's 2.8 now, it's 10 in a few months. It's, it's like, it becomes very, very powerful long-term as you compound that. Super exciting. Do you, um, you mentioned Axie, you know, when you first started Axie, you know, it was a social network. Do you think in, in, in play to earn and play and earn, the way it works is there's like multiple worlds that you end up in. So for example, like in social, like there's multiple areas, right? There's Twitter for this, there's Instagram for that, there's TikTok for this. Do you think it's one big world in play and earn, play and earn? or do you think it, you know, you can imagine a world where maybe Axie creates separate worlds? So I think that... And we're just riffing, yeah. right? It, so it's, yeah. this, is, this is all like very hypothetical yeah. and, and, and speculative, right? But I think that there will, yeah, I believe in that there will be multiple worlds, but I believe that there will be certain assets uh, starting with ERC twenties, like money, kind of, or, or uh, and tokens, um, that will right, like, kind of be borderless, um, because these things with like a I don't know liquidity and a dollar value, it's easier to port them between worlds, right? Uh, but then, right, obviously, we get into like interoperability. I'm more bullish on vertical inter- interop, so for, that's in our case, right? One team of axes, many different games built by many different developers in the axie universe, right? Uh, and then eventually maybe like, right, like having standards to port them between, right, like plop. I, I see it more as an attack vector. Like if I, there's a, if there was a game that was bigger than Axie that used NFTs, I would give those NFTs some utility. I would try to give them some utility uh, in Axie uh, to basically take their users. Um, so this is actually, we did this with Decentraland in the early days yeah. where uh, I, we said that everyone who owns land in Decentraland can get free axes. And we just gave out a lot of uh, axes to Decentraland land holders. And then we had the land uh, sale and a lot of them ended up becoming members of the community and, you know, getting stakes in land, which uh, I think like changed like a that. lot of lies as well. So I like that. My last question for you is uh, a sort of a look into the future. Like, can a traditional gaming company effectively become play to earn and try to participate in this future? Or is this a new future that has to be built by people that are organic on the ground play to earn or play and earn? I I think that these grassroots products that are built by users i think they have advantages i also believe that there's room for traditional players to come into the space i think it really is highly dependent on the team and their kind of you know internal chemistry i think that right like the this model can be applied to a lot of games right especially where there's kind of there's rarity there's scarcity there's collectability there's a strong community there's user generated content i think those are the Right, ingredients that would fit well for some kind of port. Um, I think that yeah, I also I'm super bullish on. All right, so you're a traditional game developer. You have like a pretty good game. It's like a nice game in terms of mechanics, but maybe like there's something off with the IP or the art. I would love for them to come right, just reskin the game with Axie, incubate it, uh, and then it becomes yeah. part of our ecosystem. And then they have distri- distribution, right? This is like community as a service, right? It's like your product has no adoption, but it's a good product. Okay, just like making an Axie product, and then all of a sudden you're gonna have millions of users. So is like Axie Infinity eating the world? Like maybe, right? Where the gaming world, at least, to start. It's like all about right. The future is all about user community aggregation and distribution. Um, right, so if you have that, this is what DeFi protocols are learning uh, that they can't do because there's no IP, there's no like, there's no, there's very little brand loyalty uh, when it's just like I don't know, clicking some buttons. Right, it has to be attached to content. Yeah, and the way it's set up is you can have as many sub communities as you want within the Axie world. It's like, already happening. It all... Right, there are thousands, yeah. of, thousands of different guilds. Right, yeah, these, are, these so cool. many of the guilds. Right, they say, oh, like they're 
metaverse guilds or whatever they're all for the entire player and ecosystem but all the, the only thing that they're actually playing <laughs> where they have live users the only you know economy that they're participating in on a daily basis is axie yeah we have a um we have a common friend this guy josh fabian runs this company um metify and it's like coaching one-on-one -on -one coaching for gamers mm. um you get coached by an expert and he was telling me recently that axie is like their number one requested oh. thing that they want coaches to coach axie because it's so valuable people can actually go earn money doing it so then they're they're willing to pay to invest in that and so it's another example wow. of this like sounds like a good cool ecosystem uh, being built a good opportunity it. for a lot of our influencers too that, yeah right like they they, money. they're looking for you know cool ways to you know, monetize yeah. their time and effort yeah. within the ecosystem. So yeah, we'd love to chat with him. Yeah, you should. Get, I'll connect you with him for sure. He's phenomenal. Um, they're about to announce a big, big fundraise, yeah. big bright cool. future. Well, thank you so much for joining us, man. Dude, thank this you. This was uh, this was epic. I mean, I personally just learned a lot too. So selfishly, I feel much smarter on everything that uh, everything that's happening in the space. And I am uh, I'm bullish on the future for you guys, man. It's so so cool. Awesome. It's, that uh, means a lot. Yeah. It's an axie world, and we're just living in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hell of an episode, man. That was a lot of fun. Great conversation. It was like pretty cool just how open he is about their vision and talking about the whole story around it. And it's a really ambitious vision. So I loved it. What was your one big takeaway from it? I'll give you a couple of takeaways. Okay. Number one, he started off as a community member and then became a co-founder. I knew you were gonna love that. I, what? My community guy. <laughs> no, but honestly, like that, that was really cool. Um, and it just goes to show you that like, you're not just joining a community, like you, you potentially could be joining uh, something that's gonna change your life by joining one of these discords. So super, super cool, cool to hear that. And the other thing is that game domestic product is the new gross domestic product. I liked that a lot too. I loved, talking to him about this whole infrastructure and startups and businesses that are being built adjacent to Axie. Like they have nothing to do with it. And there are all these entrepreneurial people who are attaching themselves to this fervent community and building really cool products, profitable products and businesses alongside it. And that to me is like a very cool framework for people in our community to think about is like, when you find a fervent community, it could be Axie Infinity players, it could be Harley Davidson riders. What can you go build for that fervent community that matters to them and that will attach to them that can be a great profitable business? There's so many opportunities out there and that was really cool to me to see. And also just the next 10 years, I'm really looking forward to seeing this vision that he explained actually play out and see, is he right? Is it going to be a billion gamers worldwide doing this play to earn thing? It's a big vision. So I'm excited about it. I had a blast. I just learned a lot. Let us know in the Discord what you think about play and earn. Yeah. And uh, and let us know if you got any play play and earn game ideas. Yeah, we want to get in there. We're going to chat about it. We'll bring Jiho into the community after. He's stoked on it. Uh, he wants to invest in the, uh, in the platform too, he said afterwards. So we're looking forward to it. Let's jump in there and jam. Today's episode is brought to you by Marketer Hire. With Marketer Hire, you can get expert marketers on demand. It's easy and fast. What's Marketer Hire? Simply put, Marketer Hire is a marketplace for marketing talent. They built a network of expert marketing professionals pre-vetted by top marketers from well-known and high-growth brands. And then they use their proprietary Marketer Match technology to match clients with the best marketer for every single project. And they match them fast, typically within 48 hours or less. There's zero risk. You don't sign or pay anything unless you choose to work with someone. Many of my startups in the portfolio are using Marketer Hire and absolutely love it. If you're a growing business, you will too. Check them out today at marketerhire.com. Again, that's marketerhire.com. And tell them Sahil sent you. What is up, you guys? Today, I am so excited to share with you one of my favorite companies, ButcherBox, my go-to resource for all my meat needs. If you've been following me by now, you know that I love meat. Steak and beef are my favorite food in the world, and I really can't get enough of them. Well, ButcherBox has me covered. They've got the 100% grass-fed beef that I love, free-range organic chicken, wild-caught seafood for my wife, and a little bit of everything in between. There's great flexibility. You can mix and match boxes, choose when it comes to you, so there's really something for the whole family. And it all comes at an unbeatable value, generally less than $6 per meal. 
I've loved ButcherBox, and I know that you will too. Today, we're so excited to be sharing with you a special offer, free ground beef for life, as long as you keep a subscription going with ButcherBox. You can find that offer special for our listeners at butcherbox.com room. Again, that's free ground beef for life by going to butcherbox.com room. You're gonna love it. Join our free community at trwih.com.